Uh, yesterday, a report by the UN stressed the need for countries to change their climate policies to protect the future of the planet. Uh, this hammers home how key uh, COP26 starting on Monday will be. The decisions made by the world leaders at the summit will be the most important factor when it comes to fighting climate change. But what more can we all be doing? Well, we want you to get involved in our One Change for Our Planet vote, where you tell us what change you might be willing to make to reduce your carbon footprint and protect the environment. Uh, yes, and in a special series of films, we are outlining 20 changes to everyday life recommended by experts that could make a difference. And tomorrow we'll be asking you to consider all the changes on the list and vote for the ones you feel you most want to try. We've already taken a look at travel, green spaces, shopping, and the energy used in our homes. And in the final film of the series, Kevin Dwala is looking at food. We love our food, perhaps a little too much. Recent estimates suggest UK food productions put the equivalent of more than 158 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere every single day. From animal feed and tractors to transport and packaging, it all adds up to a third of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. So I'm looking at four key actions experts say we could take to reduce our carbon footprint when it comes to the food we eat. I'm starting with the controversial one, eat less meat. The Turner family have farmed this land for over four generations. But when brothers John and Guy took over, they made a radical change. You traditionally farmed beef cattle, and now you stop doing it, why is that? It's part of a progressive change that we've made over the years with the farm. We always have one eye on trends, and certainly there's a lot of concern about red meat and you know, beef production, anything to do with livestock. All meat has a carbon footprint, but eating beef and lamb has by far the highest climate impact. So at the top end of the scale, we have beef and lamb because they're both ruminants, which means they burp up methane on top of all the other problems. Then a bit lower down, we have animals like pigs that are quite carbon inefficient, but at least they don't ruminate. And then a bit more efficient, again, are poultry. But as a rule of thumb, plant-based foods are more carbon efficient than meat or animal-based foods. Guy still eats meat, but John has cut back. It's probably been 14 months since I've actually eaten anything with meat in it. I don't think you can rule out meat completely. I think the volumes that you eat can certainly be addressed. Changes are being made across the wider industry too. We believe meat is a critical part of a healthy diet. It contains essential nutrients such as protein, zinc and vitamin B12 that you won't necessarily get naturally from plant-based alternatives. Here in the UK, critically, we have an ambition to be net zero by 2040. Cows are basically eating the grass and natural products, which you won't necessarily see in other parts of the world, where they may be fed on grains such as soya from deforested areas of the country. So our systems here are far more sustainable than they are in other parts of the world. That said, one study found that if everyone in the UK swapped just one red meat meal for a plant-based dinner every week, it could cut the UK's greenhouse gas emissions by about 50 million tonnes. If you're not ready to banish roast beef from your Sunday lunch, there are other products you can avoid to help the environment. For the same reasons that it's important to reduce the meat in our diet, actually it's important to reduce the amount of dairy as well, because the meat and dairy systems are one and the same. John and Guy still keep a small herd of cows for milking, but they are also working on a low carbon alternative, oat milk made from oats grown on their farm great thing is oats is one of those crops we can grow really well in the UK and we can produce milk from it. Plant-based milks don't always pack the same nutritional punch as dairy, so do check the label. And of course, they can be more expensive. There is always going to be a price for dairy and a demand for dairy. In terms of those steps that people can make, just that little transition, you know, substituting one litre of dairy milk for one litre of oat milk, it can make such an important difference. It's not just about what we eat, it's also about when and where it's grown. All the food John and Guy produce stays in the UK. Fruit and vegetables that are grown locally, in season, are the lowest carbon option of all. The problem with local food when it's out of season is that it probably has to be grown in a heated greenhouse, which uses a lot of energy, which has a huge carbon footprint. But the minute something's gone on an aeroplane, that's a carbon disaster.
For example, asparagus, when it's out of season in the UK, is suddenly flown probably all the way from Peru. Some heated greenhouses in the UK say they are working to cut their carbon emissions. But the one to watch is air freighted food. Locally grown or food brought in on boats would always have a much lower carbon footprint. As ever, there's a balance. If you have to drive further to get your food, that's extra CO2 emissions. And some local foods can cost more too. But finally, there's something we can all do without changing a single thing we eat. Dive in, please, too. All food takes energy to produce and transport. The minute you throw it away rather than eat it, you've wasted a precious resource. We waste a huge proportion of the stuff that we put in our shopping trolley. It's quite hard to get an exact number, but it's somewhere around 20%. A lot of the crops here have taken a year to grow. So for that to be chucked away, that is really effectively chucking away that whole year's worth of effort. And all that wasted carbon dioxide. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's all been for nothing. So that's just four ways experts say you can reduce your carbon footprint when it comes to what you eat. It's certainly given me food for thought. What about you?